What's up YouTube? Man, oh yeah. Okay, so today's video is a request from one of you guys. Okay, Daniel Chrome. So there's three progressions that I'm gonna break down from this video. Three of the ones you requested. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so this first one he does, he's coming off a six chord and he's going to a two chord. Okay, so it's something you can do over the six, I guess, but I think you can do it anywhere really. Okay, but he used it to get to the, to the two chord. So all it is, very simple. I think the most important thing is probably the melody. Okay, for this particular move. So the melody goes. So all that is. is okay, so that's all the major scale. Okay, so we're going to be doing this in the key of G. So the melody there. So the melody in the key of G. Okay, so that's how that goes. So the chords over that. And over the, that, once he hits that B, it goes to this minor chord. Okay, which is a C major 7 over an A. Or A minor chord, A minor 9 chord. Those first chords, G, A minor, then you back to the G, and then you just add a melody while keeping the chord. And that's it. Okay, so it does that little thing to get you to the 2. So that's to the two. That's the easy one. Now the next one is over the six chord. Okay. So over the six chord, a chord that works, if you think of your hands separately, is major seven chord. So whatever your one is, okay, in our case it's G, play that major seven chord. If you play that over six, okay. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on this particular chord. So all it does basically is it takes this chord, that we now figured works over the six. And he uses this chord, but he uses different voicings of this particular chord. And it kind of just goes down the piano using different versions of voicings of this chord. Okay, so that's the theory behind it. So now I'm just going to show you the chords and just know every single chord that I'm showing is either just a normal major chord or the major seven. And the reason why it works is because you have that E in the bass, okay, or the six. Okay, so the chords are. That's the first one. And the second one is. Okay, then it goes. Okay, this one's a little bit different. It's G6. It's still some kind of a G chord though. And it goes. And then. The last thing he just plays these two notes. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to show each of those in detail because there's MIDI notes on top so you can copy the chords. And what you can do is, if you don't believe me, is just look at the different notes that he's playing and you'll see he's always rearranging these four notes. And the one time he added the E. Okay, and that's about it. So it's just these notes rearranging different voicings as it goes down. Okay. So it sounds like this. the two and it does all these chords over one chord which is the E minor so it goes so basically it does something like this over the six okay you establish that chord and then you go see what I mean it all sounds the same it's just different voicings but it's the same chord so anyway so that's over the six the next one is over the 2, over the A. Again, over this A, it's playing like a dominant chord. If you use a dominant over the 2, it usually means you want to go to the 5 next. 
And what I want to do, I want to show you something with this particular one it does. This is a very nice, and these are very nice quotes that you can use in a very specific situation. Let me just show you quickly. I'm sure you've had this experience in church where someone wants to continue the song. You get to the end of the song, but they want to continue it again, but they just want to loop the end, you know, almost like give it like a, a fake ending. So usually, let's say we play the song like Amazing Grace. So that ending usually goes in something like this. Over the two, over the five, one. And then the song is done. That's how we end the song. But if you want to give the song like a, a tail, like you want it to continue for just a little bit longer, what you can do is instead of resolving to the one, so instead of going, This works very well with singers, by the way, if you're like, if you're accompanying a soloist. Okay, so they're just kind of freestyling. This chord works very nicely. So imagine the ending of the song, Amazing Grace, and you go. And then they go five. Like I said, that's how it usually goes. But so what you can do to give you that extra tail, you know, just that little bit of a length is... Then kind of forces you to do the song again. Once they hear that three major, then they know, oh, shucks, we're not ending. We're continuing a little bit. And I remember when I discovered this chord, we used to do this with the chorus leaders all the time. And then they got mad at us because they felt like they had to continue the song over and over until we stopped going to the six. So anyway, so if you have a singer and you want to end, what you can do, so using the chords that this guy did. So let's go. Two, five. One. That's the one way. Okay. But what you can do is to loop the song. So an easy way for you to think about these chords is to think of this two as a five chord. So instead of thinking, okay, I'm in the key of G now, with the major on the two, instead what you're thinking is you're in the key of D. Instead, you'll be approaching it from the key of D, with A being your five. So you're essentially playing a five, dominant over the five, to the one. Okay, you don't go to the one, but you use chords from the key of D. And it will give you a lot more options to think about. So when you get to two major and you don't know what else to do on the two major, just pretend that that two major is actually a five. And then you'll have more options because then you can use chords from the other key for that period while you're on the two. So in this case, this is the first chord. So this is over the five. Remember we're in the key of D now. So just pretend we're in the key of D. This is the first chord. And then after that, we play this little melody. You see, it makes sense in the key of D if you do that. If you pretend like you're in the key of D, the chords kind of make sense. It sounds, yeah, it sounds like you're in the key of D. So you go. So imagine if we did this. That sounds very traditional in the key of D. It sounds like, yeah, sure, I've heard that before. But if you do that in the key of G, it sounds different over there too. So we go five. We play this dominant chord of the five. Okay, and then we do the two to the three. And then back to the two in the key of D. But instead of going back to the D, we actually go to the five minor, which is the two now in the key that we're actually in. Okay, so just for that second, we pretend you're in the key of D. And it helps you because it'll give you more options. So if you think of this random chord, you're not going to know how to build on top of it, okay? But if you think, okay, on the two major, instead of thinking two major, think five, but in the key of D, we'll have a lot more options. So that's what it does over the five. So let me just play it again, so just see how it sounds. Hope you enjoy this one. If you like this sort of thing, click the link below. 
I shot a video where I showed you know, my favorite quotes and licks. So if you like this, I think you'll like that one. So click the link below and I'll see you again real soon. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.